Hey there, my name is Joe Barnard, and several months ago, I started work on a ridiculous project. I had been working on my reaction control system when I realized I could use most of these parts to build a silo launcher for a model rocket. What could go wrong? Like most of my projects, I started out in CAD, or computer-aided design. I settled on a 98mm cardboard tube to house the rocket. The idea is that when the rocket launches, it will be ejected out of the tube, it'll light the motor mid-air, and then go on its way, if all goes well. The tube will eject the rocket using compressed air. Not this type, of course, but it'll be held in a paintball tank that's mounted on the back. The air will travel into a pneumatic piston inside the tube, which pushes the rocket out. So after modeling the primary components, I built valve holders, the mount for the air tank, and a base to hold the piston in the tube. Moving up, I built a place to attach guy wires, which will keep the tube upright more reliably. To top it off, I drew up a servo-actuated silo door, which will protect the silo from the rocket's exhaust when it launches. And with all that done, it was time to start building. All the 3D printed components were printed in a light gray PLA material. I wanted a more black and white look, so I hid each part with two coats of paint to finish it off. Before we talk about the rocket, let's go over how air pressure moves through the ejection system. The air starts off at 3000 psi in a paintball tank. That gets regulated down to 150 psi, goes through a ball valve, and then hits an adjustable regulator. After that, we go into two parallel valves to keep the mass flow rate high, and then out through a bleed valve to save the system after launch. I built a set of rollers to keep the rocket upright in the tube. They're fairly simple and are spring-loaded to ensure the rocket doesn't bump against the silo walls. These ended up not working so well and causing more trouble than they were worth, so I disengaged them for most of the test launches. You can see with this first test, the rocket doesn't have enough clearance to ignite the motor in the air. I wanted more air time, so we would have to increase the pressure and flow rate into that pneumatic piston. When actuating the piston, the regulator wasn't able to keep up with the high flow rate needed to eject the rocket quickly. Fixing this was super easy. I used a long run of quarter inch tubing to act as a reservoir for that 150 psi air, which takes nearly all of the load off of the adjustable regulator. I also modified the launch sequence to close that silo door after ejection. With these improvements made, I loaded up the tube for another test. Much better results this time. So now let's move on and talk about the rocket. Most of this vehicle was built on a live stream a while back. I ended up painting it pink at the suggestion of Twitter and picked the hottest pink I could find. The rocket uses thrust vector control to stabilize on the way up and parachutes on the way down. I also ran a parachute ejection test while the rocket was on the ground. Oh yeah, there's a Tesla Roadster inside there with its own little parachute. This project has no practical use anyway, so might as well add a Roadster. So after prepping the vehicle and the tube for launch, I packed everything up and headed out to the test site.
Wow. That's not good. All right, obviously the video isn't over. What do we got for time left here? It looks like we got about uh, four minutes and 33 seconds left. So let's figure out what went wrong and fix it. The Thoop rocket uses ammonium perchlorate composite propellant, or APCP, in its rocket motor. This is a super popular choice for propellant in the model rocket and space launch industry. The space shuttle boosters used it. In order to start the combustion process in these motors at the model scale, we need an E-match. APCP motors can be a little tricky to light because these E-matches need much more current running through them than some more commonly used fireworks igniters for motors that use black powder as their propellant. As it turns out, a small resistor on the flight computer was burnt out on the day of launch, and it caused the igniter to stay unlit, causing the motor to stay unlit, causing the rocket to hit a much lower altitude than expected. After replacing the faulty component on the rocket, I got everything packed up and went out for attempt number two. Launch commit. For a project like this, this is essentially the worst case scenario. Lighting the rocket motor, but lighting it too late. Scenarios like these are why I always bring a fire extinguisher to the launch site. Signal, the rocket's flight computer, uses a running average of accelerometer values to detect launch. If you're not into this kind of thing, what that means is the rocket needs to be constantly accelerating as it's pushed up by that piston for a very short period of time for it to detect launch. It can't be one discrete spike of acceleration, it has to be a constant gain of speed as the rocket lifts off. But the piston on the ejection tube isn't slow like a regular launch. In fact, the yeet factor is quite high. The rocket is pushed out of the tube so fast that the flight computer sees it as an acceleration spike, not an actual launch, and so the flight computer doesn't light the motor. As the rocket falls back down, it hits a guy wire, getting under constant acceleration, the rocket detects a launch, lights the motor, and chaos ensues. So I fixed the flight software and ran a bunch of unarmed ejection tests to make sure the rocket would always detect launch. Engineering is difficult. It is so easy to see your mistakes after the fact and so hard to catch them before it's too late. The difference between projects that work and projects that fail has so much to do with how we handle obstacles. And it's that decision to push forward in spite of setbacks and in spite of roadblocks and in spite oh, of- Oh, come on, man. They're model rockets. You have to, you have to dial it back. Yeah. It's just, it's way too heavy handed, man. Why don't you come back down to earth and play the clip? Fair point. All right, let's get to the footage. Five, four, three, two, launch command. 